Jesus put this song into our hearts. Jesus put this song into our hearts. It's a song of joy no one can take away. Jesus put this song into our hearts. Jesus taught us how to live in harmony. Jesus taught us how to live in harmony. Different faces, different places, he made us one. Jesus taught us how to live in harmony. Jesus taught us how to be a family. Jesus taught us how to be a Family. Loving one another with the love that he gives. Jesus taught us how to be a family. Jesus turned our sorrow into dancing. Jesus turned our sorrow into dancing. Changed our tears of sadness into rivers of joy. Jesus turned our sorrow into a joy. Good morning and welcome to Tunbridge Parish Church's online service on this most special of days, Mothering Sunday. I'm joined, as you can see, with that uh, resounding uh, beginning by the Balkan family who will be leading us in our sung worship and by Ali Harbour who will be speaking to us from our passage from Luke this morning. Now, in the past, this Sunday was special because it marked the day when people returned to their home church or their mother church. The cathedral or the main church in an area was where they would go. It was a day where children who worked as domestic servants were given the day off to go and visit their mother or their family. And today it's often marked by the giving of gifts to our mothers. Today, we, during this service, have chosen to celebrate by sharing our a time with others who care in our community and to give thanks for all who care for us in so many different ways. And there'll be more on that in a little while. But first this morning, I'm going to light a candle as we remember those that find this day particularly difficult for those whose mothers have died for those where relationships with their mothers is difficult or painful, those who have children who have died or are missing, for those who are unable to have children of their own. And we're going to take a moment to lift these people and other situations that we may personally be aware of and ask for Jesus's love, care, compassion and comfort to be with them on this day. So first we light a candle. So we light this candle to remind us that the love of God is like a light in our darkness. Blessed be God forever. We praise you, our God, for all mothers who have loved and laughed and laboured as they cared for their children. Blessed be God forever. We praise you, our God, for all mothers who have wept in sorrow and joy for their children. Blessed 
be God forever. We praise you, our God, for Jesus, born of a woman and nurtured in her love, and for Mary, a reminder of your patient, waiting love. Blessed be God forever. Amen. We're going to continue in a time of prayer and reflection as we ask for God's compassionate love to be poured out in our own lives as we confess our sins to him. If you feel that you are able, then please join with me in the words that are in bold. Your love gives us life. We fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good. We seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help. We ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're going to share some words together now for us to reflect upon. We say, gather your little ones to you, O God as a hen gathers her brood to protect them. Jesus, like a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us, and with pure milk you feed us. Jesus, by your dying we were born to new life. By your anguish and labour we came forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead, your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy heal us, in your tender love and tenderness remake us, in your compassion bring grace and forgiveness, for the beauty of heaven may your love prepare us. <laughs>
Thank you so much for the beauty of the earth. Now we have some notices to share with you. And first, that's a notice about the electoral roll. And we're delighted to be able to announce that we have appointed a new electoral roll officer. We are very grateful for Diane Thorpe's willingness to serve us in this way. Diane has a dedicated email address for the electoral roll matters, and you can find this on our website. The electoral roll is being revised for the APCM. The 400 people who are on it do not need to do anything for this. However, if you're not on it and are a baptised member of the Church of England and have worshipped with us for six months, please do apply. Uh, this will enable you to vote at our APCM. Uh, the form can be found under the resources tab on the website, that's the resources tab, and it can then be emailed to Diane or posted to the Coach House by the 7th of April. If you're not sure whether you're on the electoral roll or not, then do contact Diane and she will be able to let you know. Now Easter is fast approaching and as we have done so in previous years we'll be collecting Easter eggs for vegans and if you would like to donate your eggs then please do bring them along to St Saviour's Church on the 21st of March, that's next week, between 3 and 5 p.m. That's in the afternoon where our willing Easter bunny will be there collecting you, them from you, ready for processing them and sending them off out to vegans for them to give them to families uh, across the parish and wider, I'm sure. Now today we are focusing on all who care for us, as I said earlier in the service, and we have reached the letter H in our parish A to Z. And we are delighted that three local head teachers have sent us a few words about how they and their teams of staff have cared for the families they, they serve throughout some of the most challenging times for teachers and head teachers and schools. And as you can imagine, the head teachers have been extremely busy, particularly this week, uh, but extremely busy throughout lockdown. And they kindly recorded these clips for us before the schools returned last week. So without further ado, first Andy is going to share something exciting with you and then I'll hand over to our head teachers. Hey everybody, we have something very exciting to tell you about. We have joined up with some of the other children's workers from churches around Tunbridge and also in Paddock Wood and coming during the Easter holidays we are going to be bringing you 
and Easter Holiday Club. It's called Let's Go. It's happening on the mornings of the 12th, 13th and 14th of April. And there'll hopefully also be some opportunities to do some things outdoors in the afternoons as well. If you want to find out more about it and keep up to date with it, there is a dedicated Let's Go Holiday Club Facebook page. You can find the details of that through our own Youth Children's and Families Ministry Facebook page. And you can also find the details of it as part of the description for this services video on YouTube. We hope that you guys will sign up and join us. It's going to be loads of fun and we can't wait to see you all there. Hello, my name is Katie Joyner. I'm the headmistress at Hilden Oaks Prep School and Nursery. For the last few months, all of our children have been accessing online learning. Most of the children have been learning at home and we've had a few key worker families where the children have been coming into school and have been supported by our teaching assistants and teaching staff. The online learning has been really successful. The children have accessed a full timetable and we've had some wonderful work produced by our children. We're really, really, really proud of them. But now things are changing and we are looking forward to all coming back together again when school starts on Monday, March the 8th. There's a tremendous amount of excitement about coming back to school. We've really missed that community feel of seeing each other every day. And school is a safe and happy place for us all to be together and us all to continue our learning. Now, whilst there is that real sense of excitement, naturally there's a little bit of anxiety as well. People haven't seen each other for a long time. We've got very used to being at home in the security of our families. So that's that feeling of a little bit of worry about what things will be like. So we're really grateful for you as a church to be thinking about us and praying for us. And one of the things that we'd be really grateful for you is to pray for us about that safe return to school, that transition that it all goes really, really smoothly. Thankfully, during this time of lockdown, all of our families and our children have remained healthy. And we would ask that you pray for us that that continues to be so as we make this move now back to our bigger communities. Thank you. Hello, it's Malcolm Goff here from Hilden Grange School, and thank you very much for listening. Um, describing what life is like at Hilden Grange in the space of two minutes is pretty difficult, um, but let's just say it's busy. Um, we have 25 key workers' children um, on site at the moment, something like that, uh, on a daily basis. And of course, under one of the quirks of government regulations, they've allowed nursery children in. So lo lovely to have our littlest children um, uh, wandering around the school as well. Um, but of course, we are all hugely looking forward to the 8th of March, where uh, we can welcome everybody back again as a, almost a collective of sigh of relief as, uh, as, as, as the Prime Minister made his announcement and uh, and I know that uh, it'll be the best thing possible for our children. Uh, remote learning for us, I'm so fortunate to work with an amazing bunch of people who have really pulled out all the stops to make sure that remote learning has been as good as possible and um, that has meant that our children have uh, have, have come along as, as best they possibly can. But um, uh, when this crisis started I was worried first of all about education uh, a year ago almost exactly now um, but as the uh, third lockdown comes to an end now, I'm more worried about well-being, if I'm honest, um, because, you know, different, uh, no two households are the same. Everybody's got slightly different circumstances uh, and remote learning so suits some people better than others, doesn't it? And uh, whilst we have tried jolly hard to try and meet the needs of people remotely as well as we can, um, there's no doubt that, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to focus on, on, on making sure that everybody adjusts to life back to uh, normality, whatever that may look like, um, you know, as smoothly as possible. In the, in the in the in the days weeks and months to come um so um uh, busy uh, i suppose i'll summarize it as um and um uh, we're just grateful to uh, the whole community for pulling together at what has undoubtedly been uh, a challenging time. And I often remark on the ch to the children about how they're living through history um, and uh, they're still living through history and might be for a, for a, for a little while yet. Uh, but that doesn't somehow make it all easier sometimes, does it? Um, but, uh, you know, get through it, we will, and we will be stronger uh, on the other side of this. Um, and, uh, and so we certainly look forward.
forward to a time of greater normality and um, uh, and, uh, and 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 hopefully uh, being able to view the pandemic as a thing of the past. Uh, thanks a lot for listening. Hello everyone. Um, for those of you that I haven't met before, my name is Karen Slade, head teacher at Slade Primary School um, in Tunbridge, not too far away from your parish church. Um, and yes, my name is the same as the school, so uh, we're all used to that now. But for those of you that hadn't realised that before, yeah, my surname um, is the same. And um, so, behalf on everybody at. Slade Primary School, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you um, for keeping us in your thoughts um, during this time, particularly over the last nine months, nine months, felt like nine months, nine weeks whilst we've been in this period um, of lockdown. And thank you too for your um, A to Z um, of the parish and for including head teachers um, in that A to Z. That really does mean um, a lot. So um, thank you for doing that. And so I'm actually filming this um, in my office on Monday, the 8th of March, um, which I'm sure I don't need to tell you is a really special day because today is the day that we opened our doors wide um, to welcome everybody back into our school community um, um like what the media would portray we have actually remained open during lockdown we've been here every day for children of our critical workers and for some of our more vulnerable families as well so since christmas we've had um just averaging about 100 children every day um in school um there that's about a quarter of our school community so um, we've been open and business as usual for those children, but business as usual as well for those children who haven't been in the building because they've all been accessing their learning remotely. And I just want to say how very proud I am of all the children, staff and parents of the Slade community for the way that they, they dealt and got on with that experience. It's been challenging at times, I know for everybody involved, but the resilience um, that everybody demonstrated um, during that time has made me a really um, proud head teacher. So well done and congratulations um, to any of you who are watching this. We're, we're all incredibly grateful. And as I say, incredibly proud. So it's really lovely um, today, March the 8th, to welcome everybody back. And our attendance today is 98%. We've got 410 children um, in the building today and nearly all of our um, 85 staff are present as well. So um, you can imagine the buzz that's around the place. It's, it's really exciting. And I'm delighted um, that the children all came through the school gate this morning with big beaming smiles um, on their faces really pleased um, to be back here in the school building and I know there were lots of happy smiley parents as well um, at the school gate um, too so as I said there's a real buzz and energy um, around the school I've just come out of doing um, my weekly assembly with the whole school um, albeit remotely it's been lovely to have all of them staring back at me from my screen um, this afternoon. It was really quite a special moment and um, long may that um, continue. And that, that is our, our focus now moving forward is to do everything that we can to ensure that we don't have to go back into lockdown and um, have to experience remote learning um, again. So moving forward it, for us as a school, it's about reconnecting and about rebuilding with each other as a school community. And it's been heartening today just to hear and see the children and the staff just talking to each other in their bubbles and catching up with each other on their news and what they've been up to. Um, I, we've just been talking in assembly about some of the things we might have been watching and enjoying um, during this time. And it's really about picking up where we um, left off when we broke the Christmas, when we were last um, all together. So um, yeah, very much about moving on from where we were at the end of term two. My main priority um, is just about keeping everybody safe, ensuring that we're doing everything that we can 
to keep the Slade community all safe and well. Um, and as I said, to um, prevent us having to go back into a period of remote learning for all. So as I said um, at the beginning, thank you so much um, for keeping us all in your thoughts. We really do appreciate it um, and know that you're out there. Um, and thank you for watching this very um, short video. Um, so, and as I say to all of the children and the families, when I, I sign off from anything, um, to each and every one of you, please do take care and stay safe and be kind. So thank you everybody. Let's pray for our head teachers and schools. Father God, we thank you for our head teachers across Tunbridge, for all the work they do in the schools and the staff and the children they represent. We ask that you bless them all, strengthen them in their work and give them wisdom in all they do. Thank you for the care that they show to all those that they guide and serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, before we have our Bible reading and hear this passage opened up to us by Ali this morning, we have the opportunity to sing. I'm going to sing, give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. This reading is taken from Luke, chapter 2, verses 33 to 35. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Well, good morning, um, everybody. And let's just pray as we start. Heavenly Father, we ask for your help now as we study your word and seek to apply it to our lives. Amen. So we're going to be thinking about Luke chapter 2, verses 33 to 35 today. Although the preceding verses are very important in understanding the context. So if you can, please do have an open Bible to hand. We've been hearing from head teachers in our service this morning as schools have been physically returning this week. Aside from organising testing, social distancing in lessons and corridors, rotor systems for lunch, and I could go on. One of the main things that head teachers oversee is the development of the young people in their care, which often means talking or writing about them to their parents. Well, I've been a teacher now for the best part of a decade and have talked about many, many students to their parents in a variety of situations. Sometimes good, sometimes slightly more challenging. Well, Simeon is having an extraordinary conversation with Jesus's parents, Mary and Joseph. This would be, if I may, a parent's morning like no other. And there are three things that we learn about Jesus this morning as his parents, and particularly his mother, are spoken to by Simeon. The first is that Jesus is destined to cause significant transformation. The second is that Jesus is destined to reveal hearts. And thirdly, Jesus is destined to cause pain to Mary, his mother. So firstly then, Jesus is destined to cause significant transformation. And there was once a big banner up outside the Tunbridge School gym, which had a picture of a man exercising under the watchful eye of a personal trainer, uh, sweating away on some piece of equipment. And the heading on the banner said, your total transformation plan. Sign up now for this monthly fee, and then you too can work out like this man and have your fitness totally transformed. Well, Jesus has a very different total transformation plan. It's a spiritual transformation plan. And we see that in verse 34. Please look down with me. Verse 34 says, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against. Jesus is going to transform people's lives spiritually. Some will rise and some will fall. And we should note that the emphasis is on Jesus being the cause of the rising and the falling in Israel. Here he is as a baby in Simeon's arms, and he will cause this spiritual transformation in Israel as he ushers in a new relationship with God through his death and resurrection. This is a deliberate echo of Isaiah chapter 8, verse 14, and the idea of a promised Messiah being a stumbling block who will cause some to fall. But how might this falling and happen? Well, the Apostle Paul also refers to Jesus in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 23, as a stumbling block. And what he's getting at is that Jesus's actions and his claims that when Jesus heals the paralytic or when he heals on the Sabbath, when he eats at Zacchaeus's house, were completely opposed by the Jewish religious leaders of the day, the Pharisees, as Jesus seemed to be upending the very order of Jewish religion and society as they had ordained it. Jesus was transforming it and its people. For them, Jesus was a stumbling block because he provided the way for people to be forgiven and reconciled to God through his sacrificial death on the cross. So if people believed and trusted in him as the only way to the Father, they would rise and not fall. And this was so challenging to the Pharisees that ultimately they conspired to kill him. If it wasn't that big a deal, they wouldn't have done so. What does that mean for us? Well, it is important that we consider these words of Simeon in their context. In verses 29 and 32, if you just flick up the page, we read that Jesus is the light for revelation to the Gentiles. And as such, Jesus offers that spiritual transformation to all of us. If we trust in Jesus's righteousness, we will be reconciled to God. We will rise and not fall. So Jesus is destined to bring significant transformation. The second teaching is that Jesus is destined to reveal hearts. 
Please look down with me again at verse 35. The thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. Now, there's often a clue as to what is going on in people's hearts through their words and actions. Now, you may have heard and seen something about the Hanford Parish Council, whose December Zoom meeting hit the headlines for all the wrong reasons. If you don't know, well, do Google it if you can. In essence, this was a contentious council Zoom meeting where angry words were exchanged. Uh, people were ejected from the meeting, voices were raised, and generally fairly discourteous behaviour was on display. And much of the anger was directed at a woman called Jackie Weaver, who was, as far as I understand, trying to mediate between various factions on the council. And overnight, a new catchphrase was born for the nation, which was, you have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. It was a really sorry saga, and all pretty revealing as to the thoughts and attitudes of those on the call. Well, in verse 35, we're told that through Jesus, the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And it's the words and actions of Jesus that will do this, because they will prompt a response that will reveal a person's relationship to him. And we see this through Jesus's encounters with people throughout his ministry, particularly in relation to the Pharisees. For example, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 4, we read, Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, why do you entertain such evil thoughts in your hearts? Unlike poor Jackie on the Zoom call, though, Jesus does have authority over every aspect of every life, which is precisely what the Pharisees so often objected to. Jesus knew the thoughts in their hearts, and our verses this morning teach that we can't conceal the true thoughts of our hearts before God either. And it's worth us pausing and considering here which words of Jesus this might refer to. Perhaps give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Or sell everything you have and give to the poor. Or perhaps it's take up your cross and follow me. Or love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Or perhaps it's the uniqueness of Christ which will challenge us the most. Jesus answered them, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. For us today, how the thoughts of our hearts react to Jesus and his teachings reveal where we stand before God, a loving heavenly Father. That doesn't mean that we won't struggle with his commands. Often we struggle the most when we're trying to be obedient. The great news, though, is that we're able to lay it all before God in prayer, to confess, repent, be forgiven, and also rejoice and be glad in his grace. So secondly, Jesus is destined to reveal hearts. And finally, Jesus is destined to cause pain to Mary, which we know will come in the shape of the cross. Look down with me again at verse 35. A sword will pierce your own soul too. Jesus will be a suffering Jesus, and his suffering will cause pain to those closest to him, including his mother. Simeon doesn't shy away from delivering the difficult news to Mary, and that's important because it's in keeping with Simeon's prophetic words, which we see earlier in verses 30 to 32. He warns her that a sword will pierce your own soul too. This suffering will cut right to the heart of her as a mother who loves her son, whose very pregnancy was ordained by God. And we know from later in the New Testament that Mary will be at the foot of the cross, watching her son suffer in agony and then die. There's no parallel like this in history. There is surely unimaginable pain in losing a child as a parent. Perhaps we recall the grief of parents following the Manchester Arena bombing or the Dunblane shooting, or perhaps we think today of the parents of Sarah Everard. I won't claim that these are the same as Mary's situation, but perhaps they give us something of a glimpse of that piercing grief. There is perhaps a possibility that we might see Simeon's comment to Mary as a brief afterthought, but the reality is that the pain and suffering that Mary will endure as a grieving mother is central to these verses, 
because her pain is due to Jesus's purposeful ministry, his death on the cross. And Jesus's death and his resurrection are ultimately what will bring the rising and falling of many and that will reveal the thoughts of our hearts. So just to recap, Jesus is destined to bring significant transformation. He is destined to reveal hearts and he is destined to cause his mother, Mary, great pain and suffering. There is a repeating word there. It's destined and we see it in verse 33. This means it's God's plan that this should happen. It is his way of bringing salvation as well as joy and glory. And I pray that we can all take great comfort and encouragement from that today. Let me close us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for sending Jesus for your plan of salvation through him, which reconciles us to you. We thank you for Mary's obedience and for Simeon's faithfulness too. And we ask for your blessing on all families today, whether together or separated for whatever reason. In your precious name. Amen. Thank you so much, Ali. And it's that transformational Jesus who we found our faith in and all those wonderful words that you've just shared. Uh, thank you. So we are going to declare our faith in God now uh, through the words of the creed. We say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, on this Mothering Sunday, we think of our mothers and give thanks for all they do for us. There are many people who care and look after us as mothers would. We thank you for them and ask that you would help us to recognise the love and care that we are all given by other people. It is not always easy and we pray that you will be with all carers and give them the love and patience needed. In thinking of these, we remember the doctors and nurses and all workers in the NHS who have been under pressure looking after us all in the past difficult months. We thank you that the vaccination centres are running well and thank you for all the volunteers giving their time and energy to help this important work. This week, in our A to Z of parish life, we think of our head teachers and remember them as the children go back to school. Please help the children as they catch up with their work and friendships and keep their teachers safe so that the schools can work smoothly. Lord, we pray for the people known to us who are not well or who have been bereaved and we name them now. We ask that you will be with them, giving them comfort and showing us the way to help where we can. There are so many people struggling in countries where there is little or no peace, and we pray that you will be there so that families can share a happier way of life. We thank you for the many people who go to difficult areas to help and pray that you will keep them safe. At this time, our wardens and PCC members have a big responsibility and are working hard. We ask that you help them to make the right decisions in all they do as they plan for the future. Please keep us safe in the days ahead 
and alert to the needs of others so that we can share your love for us all. Amen. In the name of the Father, and, and the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, I come to say, thank you for your love today. Thank you for my family and everyone who cares for me. For Mama, Papa and my sister too. God our Father, I thank you. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. It's wonderful to have had you with us this morning celebrating all those who care for us. And thank you, Ali, for your words of our transformational Jesus. What an incredible way to start our week. Do have a good week and stay safe in all you do. And remember to take that love of Jesus with you wherever you go and spread it out across uh, this uh, parish. Thank you to all who have taken part in the service this morning for all those wonderful prayers and uh, for that wonderful Mackerton Lord's Prayer that we were able to join in with as well. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who's involved in front of the scenes and behind. So let's take a moment of quiet before we say a closing prayer. Praise God who loves us. Praise God who cares. May God, who gave birth to all creation, bless us. 
May God, who became incarnate as an earthly, by an earthly mother, bless us. May God, who broods as a mother over her children, bless us. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.